welcome to all of you. Happy Friday. Glad that we made it through the week. And I hope that you're all, um, you know, really celebrating your achievements, big or small. Really excited uh, to be wrapping up today's episode with none other, Jacob uh, from Bloomerang. So you're going to learn a little bit more about Jacob Baker. Um, and he's going to share with us top quite, top five questions about nonprofit CRM platforms, but he's really not going to share them. He's going to answer them. So we have right. your questions and he's got um, his knowledge turned on. I just learned, uh, Jacob, you've been with Bloomerang now, you said seven years. Yeah. Yeah. That's so early adopter, I guess would be the best way to say it. Yes. Well, I love that. I'm excited to nerd out with you. Um, and again, this entire week, I've had the great pleasure of nerding out with some of my besties over at Bloomerang. I've shared very transparently. I'm a huge fan girl of Bloomerang. It's culture, it's customer service. So this entire week has been dedicated to nonprofit power week. Julia and I have had just so much fun uh, with your team, um, all of you, and we would be remiss if we did not give a, a shout out of gratitude to our friends over the entire team at Bloomerang, whether you're in Indiana or not. I know there's a lot of remote workers. Also want to say thank you to American Nonprofit Academy, Staffing Boutique, Nonprofit Thought Leader, Fundraising Academy at National University, Nonprofit Nerd, and your part-time controller. These companies are here. I like to remind everyone, Jacob, they're here for your mission, your critical mission. There's 1.8 million nonprofits registered in the U.S., and these companies... They have your back. So make sure that you check them out. And hey, they also help us produce these episodes. So March will be four years for us, which feels like, Jacob, a whole nother baby that we've birthed, right? It's yep. like, you know, four years, but you can find all of our episodes, including these Power Week um, episodes with Bloomerang on Roku, YouTube, Vimeo, Fire TV. And for those of you that are podcast listeners like myself, you can also go ahead and queue us up wherever you stream your podcast. Jacob, so excited to have you here, my friend, in the hot seat. And for those right. of you, yeah, watching and listening, Jacob is an account executive, sales manager at Bloomerang, early adopter, been there seven years. Um, but do you tell us a little bit about yourself, uh, Jacob, and nonprofit experience, Bloomerang experience, all this good, you know, CRM experience? Absolutely. So, I mean, my nonprofit journey kind of starts back. Uh, back in college. So I, I wanted to be a history teacher. And thankfully, my, uh, my advisor at the time sat me down and, and had, a, had a heart to heart my first semester and said, what sport would you like to coach? And I was like, I don't understand the question. And he was like, you probably don't want to teach history then. And I was like, okay. So I became a wayward, uh, you know, non-focused uh, student and lucked into finding a nonprofit degree uh, being offered at my university. And it just lined up with everything that I wanted to do. Oh, so uh, so I, I have a degree in nonprofit. It's actually labeled as a rec and sports degree, but that's the way we were able to get it kind of programmed in. Um, and from there, I, I always wanted to focus on kind of the youth development side. Sure. Um, so I did some work at a parks department for a good minute and help them set up right out of college, their new foundation wow. uh, that they were, they were forming. So took all the, the, you know, textbooks for the five-year plan and put it in action. Right. Uh, and then from there, uh, got a job at the Boy Scouts here locally. So for four and a half, almost five years, uh, worked at the Scouts doing fundraising program expansion. I mean, you name it. Yeah. Uh, ending with the best kept secret that that program has, which is the exploring program for career interest. Uh, so working with kids, getting them involved. So, but yeah, I, so I mean, that's my journey to Bloomberg. I love that background. And I've got to say, I feel that all representatives, team members, maybe I should say at Bloomerang, they really have that like deep knowledge of being in the trenches day in, day out with nonprofits. So it's not like you're sitting back totally from the CRM space, you know, without right. that internal day-to-day -day knowledge. So how this works, uh, for those of you watching and listening, you know, for Nonprofit Power Week, we have five questions as our, um, you know, marketing even showed that. So we're going to go through these questions, Jacob. I would love to know what you, you know, would share with our viewers and listeners. And we're going to start off with this, uh, you know, CRM question one, and again, customer service management. 
Is the platform able to show a supporter's holistic involvement in the organization? Tell us about this. I know you represent Bloomerang, but you're able yep. to really kind of talk about this holistically, about the holistic involvement. That's uh, right. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about the platform and, you know, really what we can see as that end user. Yeah. I mean, I think, you know, at this point and in, in where kind of donor CRMs are at, you know, all of them need to show the full picture. So, you know, not just making it a repository of, of funds coming in, right? Because uh, if, if that's the case, there's Excel, there's, there's accounting softwares, right? But if we really want to move the needle and really want to cultivate good relationships and steward them appropriately, that's where that holistic approach comes. So, you know, tracking our one-off emails, tracking phone calls, tracking events attended, volunteerism, you know, all those various aspects that make up that roadmap for that donor, it's important to have that. Um, so, I mean, that's, I don't know if that really fully answers the question there, but I, I'm, I'm always very passionate about that full picture because I think we all have the horror story being a nonprofit employee and being thrown into a new role and having no idea of any of that past information and just having to roll with the punches for the first year. And, you know, wouldn't it be great to drop somebody new in and let them digest and see all of that data and know who those key supporters are and maybe even find some that have been flying under the radar for you all. And that historical data is so interesting. You know, we shared, I'm sure we could share some war stories. Um, you know, there are numerous stories I've heard in my career. Similarly, I'm sure you have as well, Jacob, you know, that a new person comes in, uh, they access the database, they pick up the phone, they call someone and really am, are not completely privy or knowledgeable, I should say, yeah. I shouldn't say privy, but knowledgeable of the entire holistic impact of that person, the holistic you know, relationship of that person. So there's this one story that comes to my mind. It's not mine, <laughs> but it, it has been told on the show before, Jacob. Um, and it was for a higher, you know, uh, education, high, higher university. And they called and it was like, you know, the dean's brother. And they yeah. didn't, that relationship was not connected in the yep. database. And so I think it's so important. I've had my hands on a lot of different CRMs. I love going in and really absorbing all of the data that's in there. So I think capturing that is really important. Now, this is an off the cuff question, um, yeah. but there's a lot of integration in CRMs. And I think those mm -hmm. integrations, be it, you know, a, another email system, be it another, you know, way to capture gifts, that integration can also help to provide that holistic data. Is that accurate? Absolutely. So, you know, most modern databases at this point, you know, we... Mm -hmm they're either going to go out and, and work with the best that they, they determine on the market, or they're going to have a bridge with a product called Zapier that unlocks the door to thousands of different products then. That's and right. so, you know, all nonprofits are unique. Everybody does things a little bit differently. So the database needs to be adaptable to those needs for sure. Yeah. Yep. Adaptability and what some of your colleagues also have shared this week is really about, you know, the data is a team sport. It's not on one person's yeah. shoulders, you know, it's really shared amongst the team. So having that holistic involvement in the organization, having that represent in the data. Yeah, that's that's a big one that that needs to happen. So yep. Great answer. Let's move to question number two. And uh, this question here that we have for you today, Jacob, is how are the nonprofit supporters relationships and connections tracked? I feel like that's a really big question, but it's one I hear often yep. in the day-to-day -day trenches, you know, is having the tracking and the connections of those relationships really on point. So talk to us about this. Yeah. I mean, it's a great question and it, and it is really important in this kind of, you know, modern CRM kind of take, right? Um, not only households, right? So tracking spouses and, and those types of relationships for the, the family unit that lives in one roof, right? Or under one roof, right? But then also all the other offshoots of that family. And if, if they're supporters in some way. Um, for me, one that I wish uh, in my old solution that was DOS-based at the time. Uh, I, I wish- 
I love that shout out to a vintage. Yeah. <laughs> I, I shouldn't, I'm not old enough to say I was in a DOS based solution, but I was in a DOS based solution. So um, you get what you get, right? So, yeah. you know, in that, I wasn't able to track employee to employer relationships. And for me, that was such a key thing to unlock those like matching gift opportunities and just not having a way to visualize that in any clear way, uh, you know, really impacted the overall amount that we were able to raise each year Um, because it becomes a mountain of work, you know, to figure all of those pieces out. So, you know, all aspects of that, you know, who knows who, um, one of my favorite things, and I'll, I'll kind of plug a, a Bloomerang piece here, but donor search, one of the key things that I always tap into from a donor search perspective is what boards does that person serve on? Because if you can see the boards that they serve on or have served in the past and who served with them at the same time, board members swap around. They, they interchange. They like to move around once they feel like they've completed you know, what it is they've done. So if I can find that right person through relationships to then be in the room with me to make an ask, it's, it's going to go better. You just blew my mind. That is not something I've ever used it for, but I will now <laughs> going forward is really that board space, board development yeah. prospect tool with that. Um, so I'm so glad you mentioned that. I know one thing I hear often, Jacob, is about you know tracking not only the connections, as you mentioned, the relationships, the households, things like that, but tracking credits, like soft credits, you mm. know, did this person help to bring in this relationship? When it comes to a lot of boards, uh, you know, now we're looking at that give and get policy. I shouldn't say right. now because it's been around for quite some time, um, but yes. really looking at, okay, are we honoring this person's relationships and how they have leveraged their relationships to provide that give and get? And I think that Bloomering, you know, and, and many CRMs really do provide that great opportunity to support the relationships and connect the, the, you know, all of that through tracking mechanisms. So yeah. are you seeing that easily within Bloomering? Oh, absolutely. You know, okay. so, you know, both aspects of that, right? Like we, we like to say there's, there's the like monetarily assigned soft credits, say with a DAF, a donor advice fund. That's and then right. there's the, the $0 ones, which a lot of times, you know, I would attribute to say like a board member. So we can still track that that, that, that gift is coming in in some way, but maybe at a, a $0 amount because, you know, we don't want that to maybe show up, you know, fully on that, that board member's record in some way. Yeah. That's a great point. Yeah. I, I love that you mentioned DAFs because the donor <laughs> advised funds and, you know, for us in our world, we're very acronym heavy. So I'm, I'm glad yes. that you mentioned that because we, we tend to speak the jargon, right? Yep. Um, really good answer so far. So we're going to move into question number three. And it's about intelligence and insights. So are intelligence and insights, are those being offered in the the customer service management platform? For example here, how can we evaluate metrics such as that donor retention as well as engagement? So what are you you seeing here? And and what should we as, again, that end user really be looking for? Yeah, I mean, I think think anybody that's been you know, fundraising and and in the space knows that, you know, retention is key. You're you're never going to retain 100%. I mean, that's, that's a very lofty goal. But, you know, it's, it's easier to retain a donor in the long run than to try and bring in a new one. And so as much focus, or really just filtering the data up in a very easy and, and digestible way, um, you know, just helps to keep everybody at kind of the front of mind to, to retain your, to retention, right? So, you know, for example, in Bloomerang, the minute you open up the database, you immediately see your donor retention score. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and one of the things that I, I always kind of uh, ask, you know, my reps to do that are kind of on my squad is to see if the organization that we're talking to as we're kind of doing our first discovery or consultative call, see if they know what that retention score is. Um, Because it's, it is important, right? Uh, And and it's something to kind of live by a little bit. So, so yeah, for me, retention is key. And and those, those metrics, those insights just help, help us all kind of do better uh, as, as the, you know, the campaign progresses. 
You mentioned the dashboard and I'm so mm-hmm. glad you did. And, you know, CRMs have dashboards. I love it yes. because you're able to see like the intent, right? Is it's a snapshot of some of these KPIs, key performance indicators. Yep. What are we tracking? Where are we? I like to do kind of like a, a red light, you know, green light, yellow light, you know, are yep. we just soaring and crushing it? Or is there something we need to be cautious about? So the platform and many, you know, dashboards, Jacob, there's a way I I recall that you can do versus a a calendar and a fiscal year. Is Mm -hmm. that right? So you can track kind of this donor retention, be it a 12 month rolling calendar or perhaps that fiscal. Is that right? That's correct. Yep. Okay. Absolutely. So, so seeing that, and then it also gets me thinking to this, this level of segmenting, you know, and many of your colleagues this week talked about segmenting our donors. Mm -hmm. Um, and I'm I'm curious because we could also go deeper to say, okay, this donor segmentation, we can get that granular to say, here is that donor retention rate, you know, for today's question, really looking at the intelligence, the insights, what's being offered to evaluate the metrics, such as that donor retention and the engagement. So we can look at yeah. all the segments for that. It might not be on the dashboard, but we're going right. to have a really good over oversight. Is that Am I thinking that properly? Completely accurate, because really this question piggybacks off the first one, which is, is your database being holistic in its approach? Because if it's not, you're not going to get the engagement that you need, right? Because if we're tracking all of those metrics, the database at the end of the day should then show and visualize for you in some type of scale, you know, how engaged are those individuals? And, you know, my favorite thing to kind of point out there would be, you know, take your live on. So they gave sometime last year, but unfortunately not this year, right? So take your live hunt report and send it different to those that have a high engagement and talk about it in that capacity. And then send it different to those that have no engagement, right? Or very little and and try to word it in a way of bringing them back, right? As opposed to treating everybody the same. Because if you segment that up just a a little bit, you're going to get a better response rate for sure. Yeah, that's right. And I, I love that you you bring that up. I think that, you know, it's so important. The lie bunts again last year, but unfortunately not this. And really looking at how we can, um, you know, separate this to, to share. Uh, so we're going to move into question number four. I know, um, you know, there's five questions for today. So if you missed any, for those of you watching and listening, make sure you go back and watch the full episode. Um, as you said, Jacob, like it really does kind of stack on top of one another. Yep. So question four is uh, specifically the platform. So how does the platform look from when it was built in terms of upgrades? And secondarily, this question here, Jacob, is what about the update for a mobile first world? This is a really good question. So I'm I'm all ears. Yeah, I I like to think of this as, you know, there, there is a clear split between those that were made before the iPhone and those made after the iPhone. Right. And and when we think about it from kind of just a visualization, right? So we, uh, Bloomerang, recently went through a huge overhaul in terms of how the product looked. We streamlined everything, uh, you know, even simply just making all the fonts the same, right? Like just cleaning that type of stuff up because if things look cleaner, if things are, you know, very apparent in how how it's done, right? you can get your job done faster. You know, sometimes we joke in the database world that uh, you need to just get in and get out. So how can we make it easy? You know, if we could track, I guess, you know, those users that only had to spend 30 seconds or a minute in the database and got what they needed, that's that's like a gold star for the day for us, right? Um, Because it needs to be quick, it needs to be easy, and it needs to be efficient. Uh, And that's, I think, you know, when we think to a mobile first world, um, you know, the real question there, everybody kind of have a, has an app. But I think the question to always ask is how much can you actually do in the app? At the end of the day, is it just a Rolodex, right? <laughs> Am I just pulling it up so I can find the contact information or the address of their, their business? Or, you know, can I log a phone call? Can I, can I you know, save an email? you know, it within there. Can I pop in some notes after I just went and got coffee with them in the morning? So I'm just sitting in the parking lot. I don't have to wait till I get back to the office. And all of my notes are now logged fully to that record. So, you know, that's the kind of 
you know, ideas and the things that, you know, I think those that have been adopted, you know, post iPhone, right. And those that, uh, you know, really truly want to make an impact when it comes to that, like, you know, busy kind of uh, world that we live in. Like that's, those are the kind of key things that come to mind for me. Yeah. And, and you had mentioned too, and, and, and I've seen it because again, I'm, I'm privileged enough to have my hands in, in some Bloomerang accounts, some other yep. CRM accounts and whatnot, but you know, these dashboards and the evolution of the system overall, I think continue to change. And one thing that I love so dearly about Bloomerang and customer service and support, not only the online chat, because I've spent many of nights (laughs) with online chat, it's very helpful, but really looking at, you know, coming from um, the software side to the end user, what do you need? How can we improve? Where where is the evolution that needs to take place so that we can help you, you know, get in and get out just just to that point, as you said. So in your seven years, Jacob, again, off the cuff, have you seen, you know, really the platform change and upgrade? And again, kind of looking at that mobile first world. Yeah, um, man, it's 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 a lot uh, from a full, a full overhaul of our reporting tool from the ground up. They, they rebuilt okay. the entire reports tool, right? That was wow. like a whole year long project to uh, to having a full uh you know, full QuickBooks Online integration to, yes. like I had mentioned, the the UI changing. So yes. you know, updating that with the new brand. We launched a new uh, new brand and identity for Bloomerang. That's right. Um, you know, there's so much in the. Uh, it's, I will say specific to like some best practices because we also like to try, you know, to to work in some pieces there. Like you know, the whole first time donor workflow. Yes. Uh, and, and making sure that we highlight those that are giving for the first time, because with just like some very simple tweaks to maybe how you thank them, they have a very strong chance of coming back in the second year, if not giving a second gift within that first year that they gave. So, yes. And shout out to Josh uh, that started our week on Monday, really talking about that first time donor. We also had Ann Fellman, chief marketing officer, come on and talk about, you know, how do we get them, them being the first time donor to give again? Because as yeah. you mentioned, Jacob, like really retaining the donors is always going to be more cost effective or efficient uh, as opposed to acquiring right new donors. So right. I, I too have seen a lot of upgrades um, for many CRMs and I, I just have to give a shout out again, you know, coming from that place of the end user, how can we help you? What else would you like to see? There's so much goodness there within yeah. the Bloomerang system. Okay. This one might be a doozy because it gives me a little bit of heartburn just as I look <laughs> at it. <laughs> yeah. But this is our fifth and final question. And we want to know and ask you, can you discuss migration training as well as the onboarding process of moving to a new CRM platform? And I've just got to say, I've seen organizations go from, you know, pen and paper, Excel into, you know, a CRM. So like no CRM into a CRM, but I've also seen the export of another fully fledged and robust CRM into a new CRM. So there's a lot to digest here, but discuss this migration training onboarding process of moving to a CRM. What are the things we need to think about? Yeah, I would say, you know, bias here coming from a sales perspective. Um, You know, so one of the things that I feel like we always combat the most, um, speed does not equal greatness. Sure. Um, you know, so as you look at all the different offerings, because you know, onboarding and specifically implementation of your previous data, right? Everybody has their own take on it, uh, and it seems like the metric that a lot of times we really dig into there is the you know how fast, you know, how quickly can we get in, how quickly can we get going, right? And yes, that needs to be very important, especially if you're on a time crunch. But you don't want to do that to the detriment then of your historical data. And more often than not, you know, yes, if you're on, let's say, a very flat, you know, one, two tab Excel file. Yeah, those should be very quick and easy to get going. But if you're on a a full platform, I'll I'll say, let's we'll throw a big one out like Razor's Edge, right? Mm -hmm. One of the more common platforms out there. 
that shouldn't take the same amount of time as a one page Excel file. Right. right? Uh, in, in the Not if you're of, using it properly. <laughs> well, that's yes. <laughs> in, in the, in the real, I think the real reason behind that is it, any conversion needs to be a two-way conversation. Mm-hmm. You know, it should not just be the database company kind of dictating to, to you then how that data is just going to come in and just do the, the whole work, right? You should have some skin in the game. It's your data, right? You should want that to hopefully get into the database the right way. And that's where the time factor comes in, okay. you know? So anybody that's on a previous like CRM or, you know, they're, they're on an actual, uh, you know, donor management solution now, you know, just know that it, it should in general take somewhere around two, maybe up to four months uh, yeah. to convert the data fully. But every company should have a way for you though, to jump right on in to those onboarding, uh, some training, maybe even have uh, a separate, database that you can then build your forms in and get those on your website, right? So, so that you can make a switch really quickly, but just, you know, appreciate the hands-on approach that a lot of companies do to migrate the historical data in. So that is very helpful. No, that's very helpful because I know that I hear a lot of organizations, they have recurring donors, right? They have pledges set up. So there's a lot of intricacies that you don't want to lose, especially if it means you have to, you know, recapture some of that card information, because that could be a big loss, a big gap of, um, of revenue. And so I just think there's a lot to go in there, but discussing this migration, you know, again, I'm, I'm sure you and your team are always here ready to help, um, you know, moving to either, as you said, a plat, a flat (laughs) platform, um, into something more robust. There's so much to think about, but I just think, you know, it's really helpful knowing that you've been again in the, in the trenches day in, day out, Jacob, from that end user standpoint. So very helpful for those of you watching and listening Jacob is here today, uh, Jacob Baker, wrapping up the final for Friday, a nonprofit power week, and is the sales manager at Bloomerang. Extremely knowledgeable. Uh, so glad to have your wise mind and expertise with us today in the hot seat. I promised you some fun, or I think I did. If not, I hope you had some fun. <laughs> No, was, this is great. I, I thoroughly enjoyed this. It yeah. goes by so quickly. Um, you know, I, I had to win the arm wrestling championship with Julia today. So she's out. I'm in. But I love to nerd out over CRMs. You know, we talked with a lot of your colleagues, as I already mentioned, Jacob, this week. This week really, um, you know, has been a culmination of so much insight, so many nonprofit professionals that just ooze passion, even when it comes to cleaning up your database. If If you think that's not fun, Micah makes it fun. So (laughs) um, yes, do go back and and take a look at any of these episodes. So we started off with learning from current nonprofit giving trends. We talked about that first time donor journey, which today's question also alluded to, you know, Tuesday's conversation that we had with Ann Fellman, spring cleaning, shout out to Micah there. The nonprofit tax receiving, that was just yesterday. It seems like it was, you know, already last week, but so many good information that came out of Diana's uh, conversation yesterday about this tax receiving. And then today's five commonly asked questions about nonprofit CRMs. Jacob, so grateful to have you um, and the support from Bloomerang. So thank you from me to you. I I wish you uh, the best weekend and just want to say thank you for all that you do. Um, I do want to give a shout out to our friends and supporters that allow us to have these conversations. So again, the entire team um, in Indiana, in Indiana, that was clearly very hard this morning, <laughs> are much further away. So thank you to Bloomerang, American Nonprofit Academy, Staffing Boutique, Nonprofit Thought Leader, Fundraising Academy at National University, Nonprofit Nerd, and your part-time controller. These companies are here day in, day out, uh, just like Jacob is, to help you achieve your critical mission. And, and they are are here to, to help support you do just that. So, so grateful to have this conversation, uh, you know, really looking at all that 
uh, Bloomring offers the entire team. There's so much here, but do they are customer centric. Um, I have experienced that firsthand and I've witnessed that as well this week. So Jacob, thank you for joining us. And for all of you that joined us, uh, you know, video or audio, so glad that you're here. If you missed any of the episodes, you can find them on our archive. And as we end every episode, we want to remind you to please stay well so you can do well. Thank you so much, Jacob. It was